Well, from Italy to the two most significant challenges to democracy in the Western world. Boris Johnson, forced out of the parliament in Britain, pending a Privileges Committee investigation. Boris Johnson, after the former prime minister denied that any guidance or rules were broken in Downing Street during lockdown restrictions. Boris has quit the parliament, saying he was the victim of a witch hunt and describing the committee as a kangaroo court. It's even more serious in America, where Donald Trump leads all candidates in the race to be the next president. As the world now knows, they've gone after Donald Trump on every front. He's now been indicted on 37 charges arising from keeping documents from his time as president. Donald Trump will appear in a Miami court tomorrow, our time. In what could only be regarded as a disturbing but defiant response, Kari Lake, now some say that she could be Trump's presidential running mate, She's the right-wing Republican who ran an unsuccessful campaign to become the governor of Arizona last year. She appeared at a Republican Party event in Georgia on Saturday alongside the former president and directed an ominous message to President Biden, Attorney General Merrick Garland and Jack Smith, the special counsel in this classified documents case, referring to the fact that many in Donald Trump's base were heavily armed. Disturbingly, Ms. Lake said, and I quote, if you want to get to President Trump, you're going to have to go through me and you're going to have to go, th go through 75 million Americans just like me. And I'm going to tell you, most of us are card carrying members of the NRA, the National Rifle Association, unquote. Now, such threats, of course, have no place in a democratic society. But Kari Lake made the point that it wasn't a threat. It was a public service announcement. It is a measure of the response to the endless attacks on Donald Trump with the Democrats using the Department of Justice and indeed the FBI to discredit him. It should be pointed out, as I have before, that Mr. Trump is not legally prohibited from running for president from prison or as a convicted felon. Trump's supporters raised questions about Joe Biden keeping national security documents from his time as vice president in his garage. Barack Obama did likewise. And when Hillary Clinton was Secretary of State, she kept a private email server against the rules of the State Department. And when she was later called out for that, her staff deleted 30,000 emails that she decided weren't relevant before she handed over the email collection. As the foreign editor of the Australian, Greg Sheridan, very highly regarded here and internationally has pointed out, quote, many of the emails on her insecure private server contain classified or confidential material and related to security. James Comey, the then director of the FBI criticised her severely for this, but said no reasonable prosecutor would take the matter to court, so he let her off with a warning, unquote. Greg Sheridan wrote, I've read every book of the great reporter Bob Woodward. Half their content seems to be national security secrets given to him by presidents, former presidents and their senior officials. Theoretically, almost every one of them could conceivably have led to a prosecution of somebody, unquote. Greg rightly argues, quote, the electoral future of both men, Johnson and Trump, rightly belongs to voters. They should be judged by their respective electorates, not cripplingly disadvantaged by tendentious legalisms designed to prevent a legitimate democratic contest. Now, the highly respected Greg Sheridan doesn't miss. He said, quote, the prosecutions launched against Trump are a disgrace and a clear misuse of legal powers. Joe Biden, he says, is now using the power of the state to criminally prosecute his most likely opponent. Of Boris Johnson, writes Greg Sheridan, the treatment of Johnson is equally ridiculous. Parliamentary systems are perverting themselves by increasingly instituting measures in which they can suspend or even expel MPs that they don't like. This is intensely undemocratic. Greg Sheridan further says, Johnson's many opponents want to bureaucratically rule him out of politics. This is a perversion of democracy. Well, I'm at one with Greg Sheridan when he argues of Trump and Johnson, and I quote, both of them should be judged by voters, not by scheming politicians, misusing the legal system or parliamentary rules to prevent democracy. The actions, he says, against Trump and Johnson are assaults on democracy in two of the world's greatest democracies. And I say, that being the case, it's a bad day for all of us.